Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the Broken Meeple Game Reviews, and today I'm looking at Boss Monster by Brotherwise Games. The history of this was that I went to the UK Games Expo earlier this year and saw this being played. I didn't get a chance to actually play it, but the designers were there basically to explain how it worked, and I just went out and bought it. But mainly because of the graphics on it. It's got that sort of video game pixelated look and I figured you know I, I wanted a game like that and I knew a friend who would definitely like that sort of thing so I thought this would be a surefire hit. Normally I don't tend to just buy games on a whim. I tend to at least do my research, have a look at them, you know, see what the reviews are like, uh, have, you know, see if anyone else has got a copy in and play it, that kind of thing. But this time I just went, whoop, nope, buying it, 25 quid, buy this and the little expansion tools of hero kind that came with it. Question is, was that a good idea and do I regret my decision? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. Now, in terms of components in this game, You've got a quick start guide for use during the game, which is not too bad, but you know, once you've learned the rules, it's relatively straightforward. And as you can see, you can see on here the pixelated artwork is pretty much the same across the board. You know, this is what you're getting in terms of artwork. The rules themselves are relatively straightforward. It's not that difficult a game to learn, but I will say that the rule book's not written great and there certainly is a bit of clunkiness when it comes to uh, implementing some of the rules but all you're pretty getting all you're pretty much getting is a bunch of cards in a box and this box could do with being a bit bigger because if you're going to sleeve these cards they won't fit unless you're using penny sleeves and when you get expansions put in here obviously that's going to take up more room so the box could have been bigger i also don't like the fact that the box itself has got this horrible well, let me see if I can get it there. Yeah, it's got this horrible sort of carb. It's basically just paper, practically, that bit. You know, could they have not used plastic or come up with something a bit more solid? It just makes the game look a bit cheap. But just to go through the types of cards that we've got, first off, we have... Whoop, first off, we've got your villains. So just move this out of the way a second. And that. So you've got things like uh, whoop, the Draculord. Here we go. So he's your typical villain character they have a special ability that you can level up during the game and of course they're essentially they're quite cool they have their own little pictures and so forth uh is it king croak uh whoop, up here gorgana robodo cerebellus seducia cleopatra you know all these fairly cool looking villains and they're generally parodies of stuff in the past like if i take these two and show them up to the camera a second See if we can get this to focus a bit. There you go, King Croak. So, first impression you're getting from that is possibly like a weird version of Bowser. It's kind of like what he gives off. You've got a level up ability which shows that when you've built five rooms in your dungeon, you get this special ability going off once in the game. And the symbol there is for a sword, for fighters, because these symbols are what you tally up in your dungeon to see whether you attract certain heroes. Because the idea is, is that if you have the most of a particular icon that the hero wants, then they come at you over other players. So you've got to balance out what symbols you've got versus the others. i uh, show you another one here, which is effective. Oop, get that too focused. Here we go. Cere Cerebellus. <laughs> I'll probably pronounce that horrifically wrong. But we're thinking Mother Brain. You know, who remembers Captain N, the Game Master, and all those, that weird show from the 80s and that. You're effectively talking Mother Brain, Metroid type creature here. And that little book there shows that she tends to attract mages rather than anything else. So that's what you've got with the villains themselves, that's just who you play during the game. You've then got spells and anything from, let's see, trepidation, zombie attack, annihilator, assassin, these don't really seem much like spells, you know, as more sort of action cards and event cards, but you know, you get the, you get the general idea, fear, that's a bit more like a spell, freeze. Uh, counter spell. So there are a few. Whoop, try and find space here. Yeah, counter spell, exhaustion, giant size. So make your monsters bigger. So you've got various little cards like that. And again, we're going with the same pixelated artwork. Here we go. See all this artwork. I mean, if you don't like this artwork, you're going to get frustrated with the game already. You have to go into this knowing you like this Nintendo artwork. Personally, I quite like it. So I'm happy enough with it. And some of these are quite. 
little amusing pictures and you know got a cave in here and freeze choosing and deactivating a room in the dungeon this one is absolutely nasty to play on other players seriously you can mess people right over by doing that and they just basically all have special abilities and you can pick up these spells during the game either by way of special rooms in your dungeon or by t just drawing them instead of rooms eventually so you've got spells move these out of the way we're now going to move on to the heroes now the heroes are fairly generic you know, they're quite amusing, and but other than that, they don't really have much variety between them, apart from just slightly different pictures. And some of the pictures are quite amusing. But effectively, you're talking thieves, fighters, mages, clerics, uh, and, you know, a couple of ones that are called the Fool. But if I take a couple here and just show them to you, here we go. There we go. See? So, you know, fairly amusing pictures, gets the gist across, shows you what symbol there you have in your dungeon that attracts the thief. They have a set of hit points, and the little sort of meeple things at the bottom is like how many players in the game before you use this card. So obviously there's only so many heroes depending on players, and it does one point of damage to you. That's what that little blood drop is if it gets to the end. To go along with that same theme, you've got also clerics. Go around here, come on. There we go. Little typical cleric heals, similar stats, similar deal. To be honest, the only real major difference between these cards is just simply what type of dungeon they go for. So you've got the book, you've got the sword, and everything else. Other than that, they're all fairly generic. So nothing majorly interesting, I must admit. It would have been nice if they heroes had special abilities of their own. But, oh well, I guess maybe I was asking too much, or maybe that's a flaw of the game. Who knows? The... the where am I looking for? Rooms. Here we go. Rooms. That's what I want. So rooms are plentiful. You've got... Right. Yep. Rooms are plentiful. There's lots of them. Different types of rooms depending on what you're building. So let's give a few examples here. The um, Goblin Armory. The Golem Factory. Uh, the Neanderthal Cave. So there's some rare ones. You've got Brain Sucker Hive. Uh, the Dark Lab. Uh, the Haunted Library, Hell's Kitchen, sorry, Witch's Kitchen, not Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> it's not Gordon Ramsay's dungeon here. And a few others uh, for the priest one. We've got Dark Altars and Open Graves and uh, Spectre's Sanctum. You know, so basically, these are the rooms that you will build in your dungeon. And to give you just a look at some of these ones, this is generally what a room will look like. It will have a black heart, which is how much damage the room does when it actually a hero goes through it it will have a certain amount of symbols like those two priest anks there at the bottom which essentially you tally those up to see whether you attract that particular hero over your opponent so obviously if you don't want to attract all the priests there then you might want to cut on these but then maybe you want to attract the priests you know that you can kill them so therefore you want to tempt them into your dungeon but you know they all have various sort of immune some of them have special abilities obviously the pictures they're still the pixelated artwork i you know it is quite fun you know, if you like this type of artwork, then the theme of this game is going to appeal for you. But basically, that's what these are. You've got monster rooms, you've got trap rooms, and you've got advanced rooms that you build on top of said traps. But aside from that, that's pretty much the variety between the rooms. And there is quite a lot of them, I have to admit. There is a lot of them, and there certainly is that variety. But the problem is, is that the rooms you draw out of a deck. So when you basically want the room you want, well, you're going to have to hope that you draw it. And that's a bit of an issue that I'll get onto later. This particular edition also has the Tools of Hero Kind a mini expansion. And all this basically does is it introduces items that the heroes can get when they come out into play. It basically makes them more difficult. And there are some really cool little items here. We've got a 10-foot pole, cheat code, bag of holding boots of jumping, necronomicon, the bomb, magic mirrors, you know, we're talking all those really weird fantasy style uh, things from before, and just to take a few and show you some of the sort of, I mean, I have to admit, these are probably my favourite cards in the game, because they do have some sort of fun pictures, so, if I can get that one to focus there, there we go, pet monster, <laughs> look at that cute thing, is it, aww, pet monster, and you know, necronomicon, show you this one, again, same type of pixelated artwork, the idea is, is that the bottom ability there is what the hero gains as a result of doing it. So with this Necronomicon, if this hero survives your dungeon, your opponents draw a spell card. So it's a negative ability on you and it helps your opponent. If you kill the hero that's wearing this though, you get to take the item and use the orange ability there at the top 
to do whatever you like. So it's a positive ability for you. So there are some good ways to mess over other players and benefit yourself by getting these items. Problem is they tend to make the hero so hard that chances are you're not going to be able to get these items very often unless you've just conveniently got the lucky dungeon to do it. That's a major issue. It's just too much luck in this game. But again, I diverse. We'll get, sorry, I digress. We'll get on to that a little bit later. So just to give a quick overview of how a typical game setup would be, let's, for example, here we go, let's place uh, Cerebellus there, we'll place the Mother Brain, I'm, I'm just going to call it Mother Brain, it's a lot easier to sort of deal with Mother Brain, I'll just slide her there. You will have a deck of room cards that you will draw from during the game, everybody will draw from these. You'll have a certain amount in your hand and they can be various different types of rooms. And on your turn, you will place one face down like that. Everybody will place one face down. And then you choose, uh, sorry, you simultaneously reveal at the end. It's to stop people sort of going, oh, hang on, he's built that one. I'd better build this one instead. You reveal it and you place it next to your, dun your main guy. And this is effectively the first stage of your dungeon. On subsequent turns, you'll repeat this with trap rooms and uh, you know various other like, advanced rooms, that kind of thing. And if you happen to want to build over a particular room you can do that so let's say I don't like the uh, goblin armory anymore I've got another monster room here I'm gonna build a golem factory instead you can do that and to take some more out of this deck let's see if I can find one of the uh, advanced ones let's give that a sec here we go cards like this one they say advanced trap room you can only build these on top of another trap room so self-explanatory advanced goes on the basic Nothing too difficult there. But this is effectively what your dungeon is going to look like. It's going to have your boss and basically up to five different rooms there and you can build over them and you're basically trying to be able to do as much damage as you can to the heroes as they come in but also try and get some other abilities going off. The spells you can play on yourself or the opponents to mess them up and essentially when a hero comes into your dungeon, let's say this mage is going to come visit, which is quite typical with this boss actually, Starts off in this room, takes the amount of damage per the black heart on the card and its ability goes off, moves on to the next one, same again, moves on to the next one, same again. If the hero has died by this point, then he dies and it goes underneath your boss where that little coin is there to show that you've gained that little soul. Oh, sorry. Bing! You say, I've killed you. Bing! You know, it doesn't quite... I'm not sure how the coin makes a soul, but it's going with that whole Nintendo theme, so I suppose it's not too bad there. If the hero does manage to get to the end though and kill you, well not kill you, hurt you, then instead that little blood drop there, you put it underneath your hero, um, your main villain and it represents one life point of damage. Take life, five life points and the game is over. The verdict for this game is that I just, I'm disappointed. I really am. I wanted to like this game and I liked the pixel. I like the graphic artwork. I mean, the artwork's okay. It's not like astounding, but it's the it's the typical sort of old Nintendo style graphics you've got with games. And I do like that element of the theme. It is a nice. It's a nice look, and it certainly captures that feeling of the old sort of dungeon building games that you had on the old Nintendo systems or even Spectrum times. You know, if anyone remembers that Zinclair Spectrum from the eighties, oh, used to have so many cassettes for that. But it, it certainly does capture that element well, but the problems I've got is that this is, is far too random for me. You know, you can get completely screwed over on the first turn just because you draw the wrong heroes out of the deck. I had a time where I got butchered, half of my life got butchered on the first round because I took a villain who had a mage symbol on him, so it was going to attract mages, and three mages came out on the first round of hero cards and nobody else was beating me on mages. So I just got completely obliterated, I could do nothing about it, and that was just bad luck of the draw. I don't like games that force that upon me. You know, this bad luck of the draw, oh well, you're screwed. Oh well, you're sitting there for a while, so I hope you enjoy. The elimination aspect in this is also a little bit annoying because it's not the longest game in the world, but it's not 
it's not like we're not talking bang the dice game type elimination here with or king of tokyo we're talking a longer a longer game than that so you could be sat out waiting for a little while for the other people to finish this and that just doesn't really sit well with me also the rules themselves you know the, the whole which hero attacks which dungeon and you know what order the items come out with the expansion at they're quite clunky they're they, it can be really fiddly and i'll bet you anything that on the first couple of times you're getting rules wrong when it comes to that or certainly rules wrong in general with the game you know the rules are not that well written but they're not they're not that bad either you know you can understand how to play it but you're going to be looking at it two or three times going huh? uh, you know with some of the fiddliness of them it's not an expensive game and it certainly does capture the theme of those nintendo games well so there's a positive front to it and it's despite the slightly clunky rules it's not too difficult to teach but it is pretty much just a random card game you know that's pretty much what you're getting you're not getting a depth of strategy here you're certainly you're not getting pretty any strategic depth to be honest because let's face it you might think i'm going to build a, a dungeon like this and the cards just won't come up um there's some tactical decisions to make like you know do you play the spell on this person and the expansion does help to give you some more to do with the items that you can nick from the heroes but it's just it is far too random i mean this is pretty much just the game playing you type game really and the little mini expansion you know that's that is a cop out i swear that is a cop out i hope the other expansions for this don't do the same thing nice it came in a little box that looked like an old nintendo cartridge but seriously i had to pay eight pound for that little deck of items that's it you could have included that in the base game you know base game's already 20 to 25 pound you could have easily slipped in those Tools of Hero kind cards. I did not have to pay extra for that tiny little box. You know, I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of publishers doing this. You know, this isn't the only culprit. You know, you've got uh, Agricola All Creatures Great and Small, for example. You know, that that's a, you know, hopefully a decent game. You know, I have yet to play it, but it's on my shelf up there. I'm hoping me and my girlfriend can have some fun times with it. But you have to pay something like 10 to 11 quid for essentially just a bunch of buildings that you're only going to get four of them in you know in a particular game and much as i've well i suppose my fault i've already gone and bought them but it's that kind of idea you know you're paying money for something that you really should have just had in the base game you know would it have been that hard and the same applies with this so not going to remain on my shelf this one is going to get sold off or traded or something like that it's i, I would call this possibly the ultimate bait and switch I got suckered in by the graphics, and much as those graphics are still there and they are pretty cool, there's just not much game there f for me to play. It may appeal to may appeal to some people who are just looking for a light random game. In which case, if that's what you're after, then this will actually fit the bill quite nicely. But I wanted something with a bit more depth, a little bit more decision making, and this one just I'm afraid doesn't make the cut. So that's Boss Monster. Out of the collection it goes. Fool demands that this game should be banished from the collection.